So, good afternoon to our friends in the Philippines and good morning to our buddies in Saudi Arabia. My name is Perrin and you may be asking, what is Workshops for Peace? Well, Workshops for Peace is an overseas Filipino homeschoolers fundraising initiative that aims to educate, empower, and engage students while at the same time fostering creativity, compassion, and collaboration. We have been blessed to bring on board amazing people who want to help this cause. Our first workshop was Kids Inventing for Peace by Warren Wilson, the guy you see here, where kids learned how they can tap into their creativity and start inventing. The next session was Teacher Kristen, and it was a cultural exchange meeting with her students in Ukraine. The third session, Urban Farming for Kids by Munir Hinai, was, lear- was a learning session about urban uh, container gardening. And today's session, we will be having Content Creation for Teens by Valerie Fisher, which is a workshop that will enable us to harness the power of social media to our advantage. And our next session, which was our last, How to Start a Nonprofit by Taylor Quinn, will be on May 1, and it will teach us how to start and grow a successful nonprofit so we can start collaborating and make a difference in our community. Our beneficiaries include Ukraine refugees and frontliners through um, a teacher, a Filipina teacher, currently residing in um, Kiev, Ukraine, which is, um, as I shared with you before, Kristen, uh, teacher Kristen Boada of Kaizen Alternative Learning, um, as well as the initiatives for helping Somalia, led by Taylor Quinn, who also one of our workshop leaders, who works with the UN World Food Program, and the shelter building initiatives for Typhoon Odette victims in Dinagat Island, through Jordan Sebastian of Courageous Compassion. So this will be, uh, this event will not be possible without the help of our speakers, as well as our friends from Kidzu Farm, Tailored Food, Innovation World, Courageous Compassion, Kaizen Alternative Learning, Prince of Beast Inter- Integrated School, and Peniel Integrated Christian Academy of Rizal. Valerie Fisher is a neuro-linguistic programming practitioner with over 20 years of experience in advertising and marketing and also co-founded an e-commerce site for locally made products. This combination gave her a unique process that helped businesses transition and thrive online. In in recent months, her brain science selling framework has uh, has helped over 7,000, that's right, 7,000 online entrepreneurs increase their revenues by as much as 40%. Everybody, why don't we give a welcoming applause to Valerie Fisher. Good morning, good afternoon from the Philippines and maybe good evening to some other parts of the world. <laughs> I don't know where each and every one of us are right now. So um, parents said favorite you know, you know, the background is a favorite photo uh, or a, a favorite place. So this is actually um, my favorite place. This is our farm um, in Chaong, Quezon. So if you've been to the Philippines, it's somewhere down south of uh, the national capital region. And this is our, no, this other side. <laughs> it's confusing which side it is. So this is our, our little house. In, in Tagalog, we call it Bahay Kubo. So it's a it's a it's a traditional Filipino house. It's 45 square meters, and we have three horses, eight dogs, and three cats. <laughs> so that's why you know it's one of my one of my favorite places. All right, okay. So since um, we already did the we already did the icebreaker game, I would like to kind of um, this is some some kind of an icebreaker also, but not really a game. I would like everyone to type in the chat box how they feel today. So describe how you feel today in the chat box. Okay, let's see. How do you guys feel today? Warren says, grateful, grateful every day. Me too. Always, anytime, anytime, every time, all of the days. <laughs> Tired, but you drank caffeine. Yes, I had two cups of coffee. Good and happy for Chelsea, but good for Alex, uh, for Samuel, and then happy for Chelsea. Who else? How do you feel today? Oh, hungry. <laughs> You haven't had lunch? Are you in the Manila? Who else? Okay. Why did I ask 
those words. Why did I ask you guys how you feel today? Let's see. Some more people are, at, are putting in their replies. Oh, Malaysia. So Samantha and Sean are in Malaysia. And Cyrus is happy. Why did I ask you how you feel today in relation to content creation? Okay, content creation, basically, it's about, you know, you are going to be sharing words. Okay, words. And words are very important. There's a reason why we cling on to stories even from centuries ago. You, do you guys read books. What are your favorite books? Can you type it in the chat box? Some of your favorite books. So even stories from, you know, like the Bible, for example, it's what, thousands, hundreds of years old? What about, you know, um, Harry Potter? It's, it's, been, it's, been for, it's been there for a, for a really long time. Oh, The Little Prince, yes. Percy Jackson, aren't they releasing a new series uh, movie of Percy Jackson? Okay, so these, these um, books have been there for a really long time. And there's a reason for that, because these words affect us. These words are very important. The words that we use in our everyday lives, that's the reason why I ask you how you feel today. Because the description of the, that you will use, the words that you will use to describe how you feel and how you are at the moment is actually directly related to what your life is going to be like and your pre people's perception of you and your perception of yourself, okay? So what is NLP and how is it related to this? So the brain, right? Okay. I want you to, let's see, do I see faces here? All right. Okay. So I want you to please turn your cameras on, even if it's just for this exercise, just so I can see your faces. Let's see. Let me see your beautiful faces. Okay. I want you all to close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want to see the faces. Okay, close your eyes and say the word. You have to say the word out loud. You don't have to unmute yourself, but I so that I can see your mouths opening. I want you to say the word out loud. Mango. Tamarind. Okay, in Tagalog, for those of you Filipinos, santol. Green mango. Okay, and then I would like for you to open your eyes now. How did you feel? How did that feel when you said those words out loud? Did you feel anything? You can type it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Felt hungry. <laughs> Fresh. <laughs> how, does the, how did that feel? Can you describe what it felt, how it felt in your body? I miss angles. Okay. How it felt in your body? Can you describe it? It made my body feel really good. I was the mangoes. I went, I could just feel how beautiful they were to taste, and it made my body feel really kind of warm and friendly <laughs> all over. It was great. Yes. So I felt my thank you for that. You felt your lips move. I also miss mangoes. I, you noticed it more. Okay. And there's this word that Alevel used it's nangasim, or you felt the sour taste in your mouth. You know, it's like the um the saliva <laughs> was here and then you felt it you felt the sour taste some of you felt hungry does any one of you have any mango or santol or or tamarind in in front of you no but just the mere act of saying the word especially out loud made it real for you right? That it made it real for you. That's how powerful words are. So even if it's not there, even if it's just in your imagination, it becomes real. Your, your brains do not distinguish imagination 
from reality. Okay, your brains do not distinguish imagination from reality. This is why we have to always, always be careful with our words. The words that we choose, the words that we use for ourselves, the stories in our heads, and also how we relate and talk and communicate with other people. Okay? All right. I will give another, another exercise. This, is my, this might also be something that you guys miss. When I say the word beach, how do you describe it? What do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear? Is there a smell to it? Is there a taste to it? The sound of the waves, the fish, it's salty. Okay. How else? The wind on my face. I love that. Anyone else? Fishy smell. So you, there, you, can, you can smell it. Smell of the seawater. Okay. Anyone else? The sand. Okay. So I'm seeing a pattern here. Coconut trees. Scary blue crab. <laughs> okay. What else? Warm sand. <laughs> okay. All right. This is the reason why I asked. Again, so we're into words, right? We're into words. Because content really, content at the very root of it is the use of words. Okay? So that's where we will really focus on. So words you have different descriptions of the same beach. Of the same beach. So neuro, okay, I will just go on this one slide just so I can share with you. Say neuro. This is, this is the explanation of NLP or neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro refers to our brains, the thoughts that we have in our brains. And those thoughts are composed of, in NLP, we call it VACOG, V-A-K-O-G, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustatory. Okay, those are the five senses. Again, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or what you feel, what you smell, and what you taste. For each one of us, even if it's the same, even if it's the same topic, same piece, same item, we will have different labels for it. So in the same way that we said, that I said, beach, you have, okay, you, let's go back to, to your replies. You replied different words. You, you use different words. And you will see here that some of you are visual learners, meaning that's how you learn. You learn by seeing. You learn by viewing. Some of you are auditory. The words, the labels that you used refers to some of you, like for example, um, somebody here said sound of the waves. So Aliville and Alira, you're both auditory. So, you know, these for, for you guys, you learn by hearing. Somebody has to tell you. You need to hear it. For um, Lael, is that how, you're pronoun how you, we pronounce your name? You are very kinesthetic. Okay, you learn. So when you learn, when you try to um, memorize or learn something, you move around. This is why some of you learn better when you're walking or when you're doing something. Because you are kinesthetic. That is your, uh, that's just, that's how you learn. Okay. That's how you were built. Some are olfactory. Smell of the fish. Smell of the sea. That is how you use words. That is how you perceive things. Okay. And uh, others are gustatory. You know, I have, I had, I had this exercise for virtual assistants a group of virtual assistants. And I was so surprised because one of them actually said, when I said the word beach, said the word karaoke. 
So that's auditory. And then one of them said barbecue, which is very gustatory because that's how he that's how he relates the beach. Okay, and that is because of our letter P programming. Okay, so the thoughts in our heads, we have different labels for that. And that depends on our programming. It depends on our memories. It depends on how we were brought up. It depends on the environment where we are at. For example, uh, my husband's American. We go to the same cinema at 24 degrees, which is where the cinema um, aircon usually is. That's the standard. It's 24 degrees. I would have a hoodie with me. And I will say the words, it's so cold in here. And he will tell me, what do you mean cold? <laughs> what, 24 degrees is cold? That's nothing. He grew up in Michigan and he, he lived in Chicago for 16 years. So his programming is different, even for the same aircon setting, <laughs> okay? So that is NLP. How is that now related to how you create content? Because our words are important, and because you know you can program people's minds, people's behaviors, people's beliefs system, through their words, you can now also reprogram them. Okay, you can reprogram because it's it's just a program. It's like a computer. You reboot it and then you reprogram it. It's it's kind of the it's kind of the same thing, right? Are we still good? Did I explain it um, properly? <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's what NLP is about. And the reason why I, I picked this topic, you know, because you guys are so young. <laughs> you're so, you're so, you're so young and you have the world, you know, ahead of you. And it just, um, again, cho cho choice of words. It's not, it's not pain, but it just, I just feel like us adults, when we hear of kids or teens saying, I want to be a content creator. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be, uh, you know, a popular or famous on TikTok. Adults sometimes think like you can be more than that or, or that it's lowly or that, you know, in our minds, that's not something that you should... Um, that you, it's, it's not something that you should pursue. It's like when we were younger, we were told, arts? What are you going to do with arts? Writing? You're not going to earn from writing. Theater? What's theater? It's not even popular in the Philippines. So it's the same. It, the programming is again happening, but just in a different platform. Okay? And I don't want you this generation to be, be held up by our programming, people who grew up in this generation, okay? So what you need to do and what you need to be is just actually to be more responsible with the content that you will be creating now and also in the future because this is not something that we can prevent. It's already happening. In a study published um, in The Sun, three quarters of Gen Z and millennials okay, surveyed chose becoming a YouTuber as their most desired career. The, uh, the same study also found the following were one in three aspired to a YouTuber. 70%. Um, so this is the latest study that I, um, I heard in one of the webinars that I attended. 70% of 11-year-olds want to be content creators. It's, it's a big, you know, um, it's, it's a big chunk of the population. And what we need to do, because we can, I don't want to stop you from doing that. That's, that's what's happening now. You know, the world is digital. The world is online. So I just want you guys to be more responsible in the content that you create. When we were growing up, 
this is the difference. When we were growing up, we would look to media. We would look to newspapers. We would look to radio, to TV for content. We would look to there for news. Now, you, each and every one of you are content. Okay, you are the content. You are the ones producing, and now we are the ones consuming. Okay, so we just have to be, again, more, um, more um, conscious about the things that we put out there. So content is the process of planning, creating, distributing, sharing, and publishing content. When you guys start to monetize this, it will really boost um, your, your, your awareness, your sales, your reach, your interactions, and even the loyalty of your clients okay, or, or of your audience. Because right now, may I... Okay, let's just stop here for a moment and let's see who among you here already create content. Okay, see, so most of you, 100% probably, <laughs> all of you create content. So it's just a matter of being responsible with the content that you share, okay? What are the different types of content? It's, it's all different, okay? So we have blogs. Blogs are inbound content and allow for a lot of creativity. Who has blogs? Perrin has a blog? Yes, okay? So this shows your everyday life, who are you? What your thoughts and your opinions about certain things? Oh, Alex is um, Samuel. Do I call you Alex or Samuel? You're too young for a blog. <laughs> How old are you? 10. Okay. But in the next two years, you will probably start writing a blog. Okay. So blogs, the social media contents, that's also that's also content. That's, this is probably what we are mo most familiar with. Okay, it's, it's 3.6 billion global media users. And uh, that's why a lot of people, brands, content creators, influencers, really use social media. And there's a lot. There's different kinds. Who here does, um, does Facebook? Do you have Instagram? Do you have Pinterest? You have LinkedIn, you have chat, Snapchat, and recently, TikTok. Raise of hands, um, virtual hands, <laughs> if you have TikTok. Yes, Discord. My gosh, if Samuel said he's too young for a blog, I feel like I'm too old for Discord. <laughs> oh, you are on Discord. So that's also social media. Okay, that's also, that's also content. Yes, Twitter also. Infographic is also a different kind of content. Okay, so displays con um, information, data, and easy to understand graphic format. Okay, parents said you have Facebook, but I don't post, post often. That's, that's, fi that's fine because the different social media platforms cater to different um, markets age range, and also behavior. Like me, for example, my main source of business is actually Facebook. But my main source of authority, where I get my interviews, where I get my articles, where I get my, my speaking engagements, I use LinkedIn. Okay? And then Twitter, I also use uh, differently. I, I use it for PR. I get... Um, you know, there's a, a, what do you call that? An account called Help a Reporter Out where they share which, I mean, what kind of help reporters need and then you reply. Instagram, I use it for visuals. I'm, I'm actually vi um, visual kinesthetic. Okay, so I'm visual kinesthetic. So that's why I also use Instagram a lot. Okay, so in uh, infographic, for example, like this. Okay, so this is an example of an infographic. Has anyone done an infographic before? Okay, another um, another one. It's a, it's a, 
um, an infographic and a carousel at the same time. They, they use it mostly for LinkedIn and Instagram right now. It's the, it's the carousel type. So it's one, one post, but divided into five slides. That's also infographic and then slash carousel. That's also a, a different type of content. Okay. Videos. Now, this one, this one is really what is, um, it's actually not the trend. It really is, you know, presently and even moving forward. Snapchat, no, that's not Instagram. A few months ago, their um, GM, their president came out and said, Instagram is not anymore a photo platform. Not anymore. It has become an, a video platform. Hence, Reels. Who uses Reels? Alira uses Reels. Okay, so when you want to really, um, really engage and also increase your followers right now, it's on Reels. Because it immediately, when you post Reels, Instagram and as well as Facebook, because Facebook now has um, uh, Facebook Reels, rewards you for using this new concept. And the way that they will reward you is they will push your videos to more people so that you will be more motivated to use it more often. Okay? So that, that's where growth is right now for content marketers, con um, content creators, influencers, business owners, and even for, you know, anyone who just wants to be, who just wants to create videos. Okay, so that's the one. Now, if you want to push, if you're on Facebook, okay, if you're on Facebook, another reward that Facebook does is Facebook Live. Who here does Facebook Lives? What Facebook does is it announces. So you will see there, when I go live on my page, you will see Valerie Fisher is now live. So it pushes the algorithm. to uh, The algorithm pushes it to more people. Okay, the Facebook lives. So again, that's another, that's another video content. And kids... In particular, that's the type of content that they produce and that they consume. Okay, not confident to do FB Live yet. It's okay. <laughs> we'll get there. One step at the time. All right. Okay, another type of content. Podcasts. Who listens to podcasts? So... There's a survey that found 49% of 12 to 32-year-olds in the U.S. had listened to a podcast within the last month. Okay, within the last month, many businesses and media outlets have begun creating and sharing their own podcasts. Can you type on the chat box your favorite podcast? Impulsive. What's it, what is Impulsive about? It's okay. It's okay if you don't have a favorite. I have a podcast. So this is for, you know, for, for content creators. Um, I actually just did the podcast because of a Facebook Live. So I, what I did was I challenged myself. I challenged myself to do a 30-day Facebook Live last year, January of last year. And then when I, when I did that, I'm like, okay, I have all of this content. Why not repurpose it? So I repurposed the content, just got the audio, and created a podcast out of it. And I was like, okay, so now I have one season. That's content. You just take out, you just rip the audio, and then produce content out of it. And what happened was, so I was, I was like, okay, so now I have a podcast. And so I started getting guests. And I started planning out my content without really thinking about ranking or anything like that. I just, it's, it was just my way of giving value to my audience. And I recently posted 
that I on Apple Apple Podcasts I got the so my highest ranking was number nine on Apple Podcasts for entrepreneurship in the Philippines, and I was included in the top one hundred of entrepreneurship in you in the UAE. I'm not even there, <laughs> so it's it's a, a powerful powerful tool for content creation, especially when you give value. A lot of values because people will, you know, listen to it and they will look forward to what you're going to share next. So those are the different kinds. You know, there's the video, there's the infographic, there's podcasts, there's social media, there's blogs. So those are your different various, um, you know, various different kinds of, of content. So now... The next portion, now that you know what those are, what we're going to do next is we will create content, your content for the next 30 days in the next 20 minutes. Yes, parents' eyes. <laughs> parents' eyes lit up like, really? <laughs> I saw you. So that's, that's physiology. Okay, wait. So I will time this 20 minutes. And it is now up to you what kind of format you want this content to be. So you want this to be a, um, a blog. You want this to be on your podcast. You want this to be social on your social media. Do you want this to be, um, you know, a video? At the end of this, this, this um, workshop, I told um, the organizers, so Mommy Aliville and... Um, where <laughs> I forgot, I told them if you can actually share one of the content, even just tag me, you know, even just tag me so that I will see that you actually posted one after this workshop. And then also, you know, so I can have a feedback. I, I also want to see if, if you were able to do it. All right. Okay. So let us do this. Okay, timer starts now. So, give write down okay, in your on your notebook. Write down three fun you. Three fun facts. Like, do you have a pet spider? Do you like? eating meat for breakfast you hate balloons three fun facts about you yes anything <laughs> 11 cats and three dogs um, I'm the I'm, I have eight dogs and three cats and three horses. Well, yeah, things like that. Okay. Next, one throwback, one memory, one memory that you would like to share. Just write it down. Okay, write it down. Number one. Okay, so what? So three fun facts, one throwback, one thing that your friends always ask you. And then one thing about you that you will always include in your introduction. Mm 
one thing that you would always include in your introduction. And then the next, two behind the scenes, meaning how do you do things? So for example, um, this is how I fold clothes, or this is how I write my assignment, or this is how I brush my teeth in the morning. Something that you would like people to see behind the scenes. Okay, I fold clothes different. So that's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> how? Because it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good way to show the behind the scenes. How is it different? So two of those. What else? Okay, your favorites. So one each. Okay, one, e one of each. One favorite book. Write it down. One favorite animal. And one favorite subject. Okay, so right now, we already have 11 types of content. Okay, 11 prompts that you can use. The next one, two of your best accomplishments. Two of your best accomplishments. Next, one thing you would like to share from today's workshop that you will include in your day, the stories, Instagram or Facebook stories. So one thing, okay, one key takeaway from today's workshop. Next, one lesson learned for the day. Not necessarily about the workshop. The lesson that you learned today. Okay, next, one of your pet's name and why. Okay, so right now we have, we have enough content for 16 days. Next, your family story. So this one in particular is on video. Ha, um, what about your family would you like to share?
Next, one mistake that you have done in the past. Next, a list. So this is a list of three unusual places you have been to. A list of three unusual places you have been to. And then one review on exotic food. Just one. Like something you have tasted, something you have had in the past. That's exotic to you. Not necessarily exotic in general, but exotic to you. Roasted corn Doritos. I wonder if we have that here. Maybe I should try that. Snake fruit. What is that? <laughs> and then compilation. So list three funny moments you remember from your life. It can be something you did, something you're parents did something your friend did that you still remember just so it's a compilation of three funny moments are we all still following Okay, one body care tip. You should. One body care tip. A favorite thing you learned in school this week. Oh, two. So those are two because you might have different subjects. So two things, two favorite things you learned in school this week. Wow, really unicorns existed 10,000 years ago? Cool. Describe your best friend. Describe your best friend, any of your best friends. If you have several, Describe the t the group. If you have one, describe him or her. Oh, Sean, your best friend is Perrin. So describe Perrin. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Describe Perrin, laughable. <laughs> Describe them. And finally, show your latest artwork. Or in this case, just write it down. If you have, um, you know, if you wrote something, if you painted something, if you created something, write it down. That can also be content. Yeah, you drew a sketch. Sketch. All right. Okay. So see, it's not even 20 minutes. It's actually 15 minutes. We were able to do 30 different types of content. Can you count them? This is 30. 30 different types of content for one whole month that we did within 15 minutes. Okay, within 15 minutes. What did I say about content from the at the start of uh, at the start of the workshop? I said you are now content. You are now the producers of content. So because people, your audience, your friends, your family will watch you, will read what you're sharing, will listen to you, you have to be conscious of the words that you will use because it will affect them and it will affect you also. Okay, 32. <laughs> it's actually 30, but it's okay. At least you're there. You're, you're in, the, in the vicinity. <laughs> Your fingers died. <laughs> yes, okay. So you have to be conscious. And most of what I asked you to do are actually already in you okay you don't even have to look outside uh, or you know, copy because that's the thing with content creation these days some people find it so hard to create and they also do not trust themselves to create but really what you should be sharing and what you should be showing is from you you know that's people will say you have to be authentic on social media you have to be authentic on digital but they don't tell you how and this is how you become authentic in what you show because these are the things that are already in you it's yours it's your memories it's your it's your family it's your experiences okay and in in creating content Okay, the magic, the magic lies. When you create content, there's three things that you have to remember to create that magical content. Those that, those that make people feel good. Number one is you have to be a bright light. You have to offer inspiration, hope. You have to educate, entertain, enlighten. And just be that bright light. There's so much happening in the world right now. We don't need any more negativity from each other. So you become the bright light. Next is you create trust. And how do you create trust? Again, by being authentic. By showing people that what you're sharing the content that you are giving, the value that you that you are offering them has, you know, will benefit them. And that's how you create trust. You're authentic. And your goal is to really help and serve people. Number three is creating content that builds communities. This is why there's a lot of Facebook groups now. Are you part of any Facebook group? I think you are, like the, the, home, the homeschoolers or, you know, inventions or kids for, what, for um, science, any type, of, any type of Facebook group. Because those 
content, the admins, or the brands that manage those those pages create a community. Okay, create a community. One of my favorite books, I'll see if it's here. Yes, it's here. And um, you know, when you're when you have time, <laughs> and I think you can still, you can already start um, you know, reading this. It's by Simon Sinek, Start with Why. And he said that when you find your why, your tribe will follow you. So if your if your goal or if your dream or if you really want to be a content creator, a YouTuber, somebody who will share knowledge online, the first thing you have to do is to be aware of yourself. This is why this exercise, the workshop that we just did, it's all about you. Because we're trying to get your purpose. We're trying to get what, how you are different. We're trying to get your why. Because when you know that, and when you are authentic, and when you are honest about what you really want, and who you are, the people will just naturally gravitate towards you. You, you don't even need to sell yourself. You don't even need to buy, because other people buy followers. You don't even need to do that. They will naturally gravitate towards you because you, have, you were able to build trust and you are the bright light in their lives. And that is what creates magic in content creation and in the online space. Okay, so that is our workshop for today. Yeah, Any thank you questions? so much. <laughs> thank you, uh, so thank you so much, Valerie, um, for that. Or Val, thank you so much. That was an amazing workshop. I really learned a lot. My fingers are a tad bit tired because <laughs> I was try I was keeping up with you, and yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, like Valerie said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to raise your hand like this. As you can see, also, if feel free to raise your hand, we'll call you out, and then you can unmute. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions? It's okay. Don't be shy. I don't fight. <laughs> well, let me. That if they're trying to think of questions, that means your talk was like so good that they are all the questions are already answered. But um, let me ask a question for you. Um, how did you start out, you know, as a neuro-linguistic practitioner, you know? How did you start out? And how, did, uh, how was your journey? So this book started my journey. <laughs> I read this in 2015. Two books actually started my journey. First is to start with why, and then the other one is um, the Gallup Strengths Finder. So the Gallup Strengths Finder, it's actually an exercise. It's an assessment. It's a book, but at the end of it, there's an assessment. And it will tell you your strengths as a person. When I read that book, it said, yeah. So when I read, when I read that book and, and took the assessment, it said there that my five biggest strengths uh, are input, meaning I research a lot. I love to learn. Input, learner, creator, focus, and achiever. So those are my uh, those are my strengths. And I realized I have not actually been using my strengths. And you know, so that one and this book asking me asking me what is my why? What why am I in this earth and this world for? So those book those two books started my questioning, but. NLP, I have been using for my clients because my mentors were actually business partners. So I'm like, how do I know that? How do I know how to use my strengths? And how do I know how what my why is? And the tool that I realized was accessible to me was NLP. NLP, um, just to also give you guys a, a more of a background, it was started in the 1970s by Richard Bandler and John Grinder. And their goal was to study excellence. So
So it is a study of excellence. Why are people excellent and others are not? Even if they're given the same opportunities and given the same resources. So that was the start of the study. And what they did was, you know, they studied different types of peoples and model and, and different types of models. And they came up with, with NLP. And what I just did, so NLP is actually more for personal development. What I just did is I used it for marketing, digital mar- marketing in particular. You can use it for leadership. You can use it for personal development. You can use it for customer service, for sales, many, 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 many things. But that's how I started. It was a question I, that I needed an answer to. Thank you so much for the answer. It was very insightful. I learned a lot, you know, starting with that one question. Um, it does anyone else have any question? Let me ask first the people who have their cameras turned on. Lael or Osis, is that how you pronounce your name? Did I, did I pronounce it right? Uh, Ellison, uh, um, Sam, do you guys have any questions? Um, uh, not, not really. Okay, so we have this question from Tita Ali, Alville. What does your why change? Um, the representation or the way that you label, the way that you express your why changes, but not really the why itself. So for example, Um, It took me two years to finally find out what my why is. You know, okay, the reason why is because I will get a little bit geeky, guys. Who who are geeks here? I'm a geek. Raise your hand if you're a geek. (laughs) Okay, so so two parts of the brain, which where language and reason and logic lie. So they're they're here. And then we have the limbic system, which is here, somewhere here. That's where our emotions lie. They are not in the same parts of the brain. So that is why it is hard for us to express what we truly feel because language and emotions are from different sides, are in different sides of the brain. So to answer the question, does the why change? Sometimes we express them differently depending on where, which stage um, of our life we are. So like me, the two years, you know, I started with what is really my why and then changed it. But at the end of the day, it's really about actually three things, inspiration, courage, and change. Because my why, according to, well, I just followed the template that Simon Sinek gave is to inspire courage to create change together. So in whatever I do, I try to inspire courage. So like when I started this workshop, I told you guys, you can go for it. Go for being a content creator. Do not be, um, how do I say? program do not join the programming that we were brought up with because we were told not to do certain things you can choose to do certain things okay so that's where the courage lies and then creating change is by training and by sharing what i know so that you guys and people that i touch will also change they're, you know, change their status quo, transform their lives. And some, you know, it has evolved. That why has evolved. Sometimes I use the word transformation. Sometimes I use the word bravery. But it's really um, the same thing. What are your struggles as a content creator? Inspiration. It's hard to sometimes find inspiration. So this is why this exercise helps. Because now, you know, even for me, I discipline myself to allocate a time. And then even if it's just, okay, content for the next five days. Because not all the time you will be, you know, inspired to have, to think of something. 
but the inspiration can be can be trumped by discipline by just being consistent about it what are good content ideas good content ideas are um the ones that will show the one that i mentioned being a bright light inspirational okay or uh en enlightening or educational or entertaining or a combination of all those are the those are the great content ideas oh one thing by the way um this was inspired by a post i saw this morning one of the you know one of the people i one of my clients saying about bad mouthing people because some content creators you know they will say i don't like this person or i don't like this brand or this hotel disappointed us or whatever there is what you call the spontaneous trait transference okay spontaneous trait transference so when you say bad things about people products brands companies whatever the traits the words that you use to describe them boomerangs to you it goes back to you you are associated with those bad words that you use for other people so that's not good content <laughs> that's not a good content idea yeah so um um i think warren also had also has a question that he'd like to ask i saw him raising his hand a bit a while ago Actually, I did. Thanks, Valerie. That was a really excellent talk. Thank you. Um, I'm an inventor. And what I found was that with inventors, like they'll see something outside of them and they'll create an idea. But to make it successful, it's kind of something inside of them that drives them to be successful. Is, is that what you're saying about content creators? Like it's something that it's expressing what's inside of them to be like to be a good content creator? Yes. Um Um, that's number one, come from you because that's what makes you that's what will make you different from a sea of other content creators because no one else is like you no one else has your um favorite you know co a combination of why you called your pet this one your your pet's name and why and the reason why you know we might all have my one of my cat's names is bowie and I, re I, one of my friends yesterday said her new cat is also called, called Bowie. But my Bowie, we call him Bowie because when we got him, we didn't know if he was a he or a she. It was androgynous. So we called him Bowie <laughs> from the artist. So, but her, she called him Bowie just because it sounds good. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what will make you different. And that's being a good creator is means being authentic being true to yourself thank you thank you okay so i think we can have our last question from tita ali do you suggest to always have video a video or image in posting something on facebook no why as i mentioned earlier we have diff we learn different ways some are visual some are auditory kinesthetic olfactory and gustatory so for you to also be a good content creator, you have to be able to um, serve the different kinds. So visual, yes, video. So, but sometimes use audio because other people are auditory. So an audio clip, an audio file, a, um, you know, a music, a playlist. You can share your playlist. Like for example, me, I have a playlist that I shared music that's good for the brain. That's auditory. Kinesthetic, share um, quotes that make people feel good. Or um, movement, anything that has to do with movement. So that's kinesthetic. Um, olfactory and gustatory. So different kinds. You can show food. You can show, uh, you know, anything that is related to, to taste or smell. You can, that's what you need to do for it to really... Um, cater to different kinds of people and to different kinds of, of learners. I hope that answers your question. So do you have any last advice about, you know, responsible content creation? 
Um, number one, be true to yourself. Do not copy because um, this example might not actually be applicable to you because you did not grow up with photocopiers. <laughs> but when you photocopy something, as you photocopy it several times and several times, it loses its integrity. Okay, so you always have to be true to yourself because if you copy, you lose integrity. Number two is cater. You use make make your uh, make your contents come alive by using different modalities: visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustatory. So different kinds, and always be a positive, vibrant, energetic. You know, just. Give off that vibe, vibe. Give off that that vibe for for your followers because you know we don't need any more <laughs> negativity in this world. So those are the three things that um, I can you know use to so to summarize our workshop for today. Yeah, thank you so much. And now it is time for our feedback form. That's right. We want to know what you guys think and what you guys want, possibly want in the future. And the link is bit.ly slash uh, WFP content creation, as you can see here on the screen. If you guys have any more questions, you can also ask them to Valerie there and we'll happily send them to Valerie and, um, and send her answer back to you. Yes, you can also follow me on social media media valerie Twitter, on facebook instagram tiktok linkedin wherever you are <laughs> yep that's right and once again we'd like to thank you all uh, for supporting this initiative we know that you know there are a lot always a lot of people in need in different parts of the world we chose these three beneficiaries because we know and have met the people who are directly involved in initiatives that are helping those in, in need in these locations. Suffering may come from both man-made and natural disasters, and most of these are beyond our control. But what we can control is our response. So thank you for choosing to respond with compassion. We'll be sharing updates in Ukraine, Somalia, and the and the Dinagat Islands in our Facebook group. So please check that out also if you're interested to know more. But before we close, it's time for a Zoom photo. That's right, guys. So put on your biggest smiles and please turn on your cameras. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming today. We'll be sending you a copy of this session's video. So And we hope to see you in the next session. And we hope to see you in our next and final workshop with Taylor Quinn from all the way from Canada. So th see you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a great thank day. You. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you so much. We learned a lot. Bye. Have a great day.